Uh, we are now in heading to the tail end of our five-week series, uh, the road out. Uh, ilan po sa inyo rito, first time nyo pong uh, maging mag-service uh, sa atin sa Victory Pass. Can you just uh, raise your hands para medyo may idea lang ako, no? Kung, uh, uh, kasi meron lang, papaliwanag ko lang din siguro just in case you missed some of the, uh, the at least yung the past few Sundays, no? Meron po ba sa inyo every Sunday you were here, naabutan nyo yung series natin? So at least, okay, so medyo... Uh, ilan po sa inyo, kahit anong itanong ko, nakatingin lang talaga kayo sa akin. Hindi ko alam kung inaantok ba kayo or nagugutom na kayo, okay lang naman. Uh, amazed, na-amazed lang. <laughs> na-amazed kay, kay Pastor James kasi magaling siya magtagalog. Ay, talaga amazing talaga ang Panginoon natin. Ano? But uh, again, we are now in week four of our series, The Road Out, and uh, we've been talking about the book of Exodus. Um, in case bago kayo or maybe hindi, nyo, hindi pa kayo gano'n nakakapagbasa ng uh, Bible, the, Exodus, the book of Exodus is actually the second book uh, in the whole Bible, katabi niya ang Genesis, okay? And we've been talking about Moses and how God used a man by the name of Moses to be able to lead the Israelites out of Egypt because they were enslaved there. Now, uh, if you remember, the Bible said in Exodus chapter 1, the Israelites grew to become a community of people. Sobrang laki nila, pero galing sila sa isang tao, no? Ang ancestor nila, si Abraham. In fact, in Genesis chapter 12, when we move back to the very first book in the Bible, God called Abraham, okay, yung pang, pangalan niya nung time na yun, and God promised to him as he leaves his uh, father's household kung saan man sila nakatira and move to the land that he would be showing to him, the Lord would bless him. At hindi lamang sa pagpapalain, gagawin pa siyang pagpapala sa buong mundo. Can you imagine? Yun yung pangako sa kanya na Panginoon. He was an obscure person. He was living, you know, in a nice cosmopolitan city of earth. Okay na siya dun eh. Pero sabi ni Lord, labas ka dyan. Ituturo ko siya, dadaling kita sa lupa kung saan ko gustong uh, gamitin kita at gagawin kitang pagpapala sa buong mundo. Think about it. And now, when we fast forward decades later, long after Abraham was already dead, yung grandson niya si Jacob, dumami na sila. There were about 70 at that time na nag sa Egypt and they were reunited with his son, Joseph, who was already the governor of Egypt. At doon na sila Dumami ng dumami sa loob ng Egypt. Now, uh, when we sum things up, when we go back to Exodus chapter 1, a time came when a king or a pharaoh rose to power at wala siyang idea kung ano yung ginawa at naging contribution nila Joseph at ni Jacob. Okay? And all he did was he saw the growing number of Israelites as a threat. Sabi niya sa mga staff niya, Pag itong, itong Israelites na to nagkagera, malamang sasama to sa mga kalaban natin. So, gawin na lang natin silang alipin. And so, for the next 400 years, they became slaves in Egypt. Think about it. Taon-taon na lang, siguro kung celebrate sila ng New Year, pag may pinapanganak na mga bata at lumalaki sila, ang nasa isip nila, ah, Israelita ako, alipin ako. Ganun na yung mindset nila. Imagine, 400 years. Naman, namamatay yung older generation, may bagong itapanganak. Ah, anong lahi mo? Israelite ako. Ah, alipin. Laging ganun, ano? So, ganun yung naging naisalin sa kanila na thinking na alipin sila. And yet, God remembered His covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob, and He wanted to bring that promise to fulfillment. So, He called out a man by the name of Moses. At ito yung pinag-uusapan natin for the past uh, at least four Sundays, no? Now, very interesting, the phrase, ito mababasa natin to in chapter 7 to 11 of the book of Exodus, lagi natin makikita tong phrase na to the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, okay? The first time I encountered this phrase, I was wondering, sabi ko, tinanggalan ba ni Lord ng free will itong si Pharaoh? Bakit kaya ganun na nangyari? But when... Uh, we examine the Bible closely, mapapansin natin, bago pa minention ni God to, na hinarden ni God yung heart niya, Pharaoh was already stubborn and arrogant in all his dealings, particularly with the people of Israel. Ganun na yung naging attitude niya. In fact, when we look at uh, 
the ancient times, the Pharaoh was actually considered a god here on earth. Siya yung mediator between the gods. There were about 60 to 80 gods and goddesses that they worship. So yung Pharaoh, siya yung para nag-mediate between these gods and the Egyptians. So parang in a way, God din ang tingin sa kanya. No? So ito yung sabi sa Exodus chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. This was the very first time Moses and Aaron appeared in the royal palace to Pharaoh. At ito yung reply ng Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? Maybe he was thinking, eh, Sino ba yan? Diyos ako. Ako, nag, ako ang namamagitan sa Diyos, sa mga Diyos namin at sa mga you know, sa mga subjects ko. Parang ganun siguro iniisip niya. I do not know the Lord. And moreover, I will not let Israel go. And from then on, back and forth, si Moses at si Aaron pupunta sa royal palace at mag a na pakawalan ang mga Israelites. But then Pharaoh would put his foot down and say, No, I'm not gonna let them go. Who is the Lord? Di ba? Laging ganun. Now, when we go back to the previous uh, Sundays, eventually Moses and Aaron would tell and would warn Pharaoh again and again he would be sending plagues, okay, if Pharaoh would refuse to let the Israelites go. Now, the great acts of judgment eventually came in the form of different plagues, okay, which... The past two Sundays, ito yung shinier ni Pastor Angelo at ni Pastor Lee, just in case you forgot. No? The Lord sent plague after plague to Egypt in an astounding display of might. Okay? Bakat astounding? It was actually an act that the Lord intended to bring judgment over the gods of Egypt at the same time to put judgment over Pharaoh. Okay? Isa isa natin quickly, no? Ano ba yung mga plagues? It started with the water that God turned into blood. The entire Nile River that uh, stretches forth to several nations during that time hanggang pumunta ng Egypt. Now remember, the Nile River in ancient times, ito yung water is life. At alam naman natin yan. Wala, meron ba rito hindi umiinom ng tubig? <laughs> Mahirap yatang mabuhay ng walang tubig, no? In fact, our body is probably composed of 75% Water. The earth is composed of 80, 65 to 70 percent water. So imagine, water is life. And for water to be turned to blood, it would be very difficult for them to survive. And God had to do this to demonstrate His power over the Egyptians. Another is frogs. Okay, mga palaka. Meron ba rito, nag-aalaga ka ng palaka? Siguro ang, probably ang pinaka- Memorable lang siguro sa atin nung nag-aaral tayo, nagda-dissect tayo ng palaka, di ba? O kaya kinakain natin yung inadobong palaka, mga ganon, no? pwede pa siguro mga Pilipino. No? Pero yung frog was actually a symbol because for the Egyptians, isa siyang Diyos. Actually, isa siyang Diyosa. No? Meron silang Diyosa na ulo ng palaka pero katawan ng tao. Okay? So again, that was part of the judgment. Plague number three were the gnats, okay? Representing the god Geb, no? He was the god of the earth. And as lies or gnats came from the dust and the ground. The next is the plague of flies. How many of you like flies? Nobody likes this, especially when you're eating, okay? Ayaw natin ng maraming langaw, no? So, ito naman yung god na ginudge ni God. And then the livestock uh, were not just deceased, Okay, actually, namatay. Okay, maraming mga alagang hayop uh, ang Egypt na namatay. No? Eventually, it was another plague. Another is boils. Okay, maraming bukol uh, sa katawan and all that. And then the next, the seventh plague was the plague of hail. Okay, major lightning, thunder, and then of course, hail that rained down over the entire land of Egypt except the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were staying, okay? Because God made a distinction between His people and the Egyptians. And then, in the plague number eight was locusts, okay? Uh, although, alam ko, balita ako yung mga Ilocano. Meron ba mga Ilocano rito? 
ang ganti daw nila sa mga locus, kinakain daw nila to. Tama ba? Totoo ba yung balita? Ah, diba, no? Pagka nang huhuli sila, gaganti sila, kainin namin to. Okay? Pero ang daming sigurong locus na to at naubos yung mga green plants no? <laughs> sa buong Egypt. And finally, number nine, the plague number nine, darkness. Ito hindi ko, mapik- hindi ko ma-imagine. No? Kasi the Israelites live in Goshen, but the entire area of Egypt black out. Okay, paano kaya nangyari yun? Matinding eclipse siguro yung nangyari dito na ginawa ng Panginoon. These were nine plagues that God uh, demonstrated before Pharaoh and the entire Egyptians and yet, they refused to let the Israelites go. And that's just the intro of my message, by the way. Okay? <laughs> intro pala. Hindi, kasi ni-recap muna natin. No? But we're gonna read, ito na yung pag-uusapan natin for tonight. We're going to talk about two chapters, but since it's very long at baka umuwi tayo ng 12 midnight at yung iba sa inyo, baka mag-walk out na kayo, <laughs> isa-summarize ko na lang yung iba rito. But I want, I want you to open your Bible. Stand with me in reverence to the Word of God. And we're going to read Exodus chapter 11, verses 4 to 9. Okay? And later on, I'll be talking about chapter 12 as well. Okay? 11 verse 4, it says here, Moses said, Thus says the Lord, About midnight I will go out in the midst of Egypt, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the cattle. There shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there has never been nor ever will be again. But not a dog shall growl against any of the people of Israel, either man or beast, that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. And all these your servants shall come down to me and bow down to me, saying, Get out, you and all the people who follow you. And after that, I will go out. Let's all bow our heads and pray. Father, we are committing this time as we study God's word tonight We are praying that our minds and hearts would be illuminated from the very Word of God and may this Word bring your transformation in us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's all take our seats. If ever you've read in the Old Testament, the word Passover appeared in this chapter, at least in the book of Exodus, for the very first time. This was actually the tenth plague. Ito na eventually yung naging last plague that uh, would force or would pave the way for Pharaoh, okay, for the Pharaoh to soften his stance and let the Israelites leave Egypt. So yung binasa natin kanina, uh, ito na yung parang kumbaga sa palabas sa Netflix. Di ba pag manunod ka ng Netflix, minsan 16 episodes, uh, o kaya kung may panonoorin kang movie, may preview yan, di ba? Para medyo may idea ka, minsan 45 seconds. So basically, yung binasa natin kanina, parang nagbigay na ng preview ang Panginoon. Sabi niya, Moses, ito gagawin ko. So, dun pa lang sa sinabi ng Panginoon, may idea na si Moses, ah, ito gagawin ng Lord. Ito na, finally, ito na yung huling plague. Nakakapagod ha, pabalik-balik ako, Lord. Pupunta ako ng palas, babalik ako sa'yo. Tapos papagalitan ako ni Pharaoh, tapos papalit na naman ako sa iyo. <laughs> so siyam na plagues yun. And each time, he would go and face Pharaoh, the Pharaoh would say, ito na naman yung pagbumukha mo pa. Nagsawa na siguro si Pharaoh sa kanya. Nagsawa na rin si Moses. Sabi niya sa wakas, patapos na. Lalaya na rin ng mga Israelites. Parang ganun yung, yung itsura niya. No? Now, the Passover meant that God was judging Pharaoh and the gods of the Egyptians one more time by putting to death all the firstborn. Panganay, basically. And in ancient times, napakahalaga ng panganay. Actually, kahit naman sa panahon natin. Meron ba sa inyo panganay kayo? Okay, iba sa inyo, ayaw nyo. Pwede bang bunso na lang, di ba? Pero imagine mo yung role ng mga panganay, di ba? Since ancient times, napakahalaga ng role nila. Okay? So, ito yung, basically, ito na yung plague that would finally uh, prove to the Egyptians, even to Pharaoh, that God is the God of all creation. Okay? Now, the death of the firstborn will cause a massive outcry in the entire land of Egypt, 
Egypt except in the land of Goshen, which was also part of the Egyptian territory because doon nakatira yung mga Israelites. Okay? So, may distinction. And this would make Pharaoh drive the Israelites out completely. Now, how did the Passover happen? At ano ba nangyari dito? Okay? Summarize natin. Tignan natin. Ano? When we look at the chapter 12 of Exodus, the Passover begins with God instructing every Israelite family to take a lamb that was to live with them for about four days. Bakit apat na araw? Hindi natin alam, no? Merong, kumbaga, may explanation ng Panginoon. Siguro, alagaan nila ng apat na araw. At yung itsura ng lamb na yan, yung iba sa inyo, mukhang nagugutom, lamb chops ang iniisip nyo, no? Apat na araw, titira sa kanila. And then, on the fourth day of their stay, of the stay of that, uh, the lamb, by twilight, papatay na nila yung lamb. The lamb must not be with, wala siya dapat defect. Hindi siya bulag, hindi siya pilay, walang mga sugat, walang mga galis or anything. Okay? Kumbaga, ano siya, unblemished na description nga in the Old Testament. And then, uh, as they kill the lamb or the young goat by twilight, ito yung instruction ng Panginoon in verses 7 to 8 in chapter 12. Then, they shall take some of the blood, pag napatay na yung lamb, okay, and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Now, with the blood of the slaughtered lamb, kind of gory picture, no? Kung titingnan mo, parang... Para siguro yung buong gosya ng ingay, no? may, may parang kinakatay, no? parang ganun yung sound niya. And then as the lamb gets killed, they will get the blood, dip uh, a hyssop, it's a kind of plant, and then ilalagay nila sa doorpost ng bahay nila. Ito yung picture, no? So maglalagay sila ng dugo. Okay? Sa top, saka yung sides, as instructed by the Lord. And uh, what will happen would be on the day that God would let the angel of death pass through, pag nakita ng angel of death yung doorpost na may mga dugo, ay lalagpasan niya lang yung, yung, yung bahay nung, kung saan nakatira yung mga Israelites. Now, the Passover was God's way of rescuing every Israelite household from the plague of the firstborn. Nabanggit ko nga, an angel of death will pass through the entire land of Egypt at pag yung pintuan, walang blood, walang paint ng blood nung lamb, mamamatay yung firstborn. Kung may firstborn na nakatira dun sa bahay. Now, in effect, the blood of the lamb on the doorpost was God's way of rescuing the Israelites from destruction. Okay? Kasi may angel of death na dadaan eh. And at the same time, God was giving Moses very specific instruction regarding the annual celebration of the Passover. That was the first, and eventually God would say, gagawin niyo na to taon-taon. Because I want you to be reminded that on this day, I spared you from death, while the rest would die. Okay, I spared you from death a picture of God's grace over the Israelites. They did not deserve it, but God demonstrated it to them. And if you apply it in our life today, in reality, meron ba ritong walang kasalanan? Diba, lahat naman tayo nagkakasala, di ba? So imagine, minabanggit ka ni Pastor James yan, meron ba sa inyo tatlong pong kasalanan ang nagawa niyo today? I mean, imagine, from time to time, we may sin even as Christians, and yet, God demonstrated His grace to each one of us. This was a picture of God's grace. Undeserving tayo ng mercy at love ng Panginoon, pero ipinapakita niya pa rin sa atin araw-araw. Okay, kahit paminsan sumasablay tayo, the sun still rises for each one of us. Kaya nagpo-provide ng vitamin D sa atin. Diba? Imagine that kahit na undeserving tayo, may ulan pa rin sa Pilipinas. Okay, minsan nga lang, nakakapinsala. Pero nagbibigay pa rin ng ulan ng Panginoon sa atin para, alam mo yon yung agricultural land ng bansa natin, may tubig. 
Diba? Sa ibang bansa, isipin mo na lang, luxury ang ulan. Diba? Kasi di sila nauulanan eh. Pero tayo, geographically, God positioned our nation in such a way so that we would be blessed as a nation. Okay? That's the grace of God as demonstrated. And finally, the sacrifice of the Passover lamb, the application of its blood on the doorpost and the eating of meat, okay? they all foreshadow what Jesus will be doing thousands of years after this. Okay? Ito yung gagawin ni Jesus. No? He would save the people from judgment. He would die a gruesome death on the cross. Yun po yung mangyayari doon. We will be saved from the wrath of God through God the Son Himself. Now, based from Exodus 11 and 12, I want to share to you the three, the Passover points us to three biblical realities. Ano ba yung tatlong biblical realities that are now operating in our life today? What we need to not just know, but hopefully would be able to apply in our life. Okay? Unang-una, the Passover reminds us we are slaves to sin and in need of God to save us from it. Okay? Lahat tayo, whether we like it or not, alipin tayo ng kasalanan. Would you agree with me? Kahit naman mabait tayo, no? kahit sabi pa natin ikaw pinakamabait sa balak ng lupa, you would still sin because there is a sinful nature that has been passed on to us by Adam and Eve. Now, Exodus 12, verse 11 to 12, it says here, In this manner you shall eat it. Now, this was God's instruction to Moses. With your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night. I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and all, and all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. You see, the Israelites were slaves for four centuries, 400 years. But on the day of the Passover, the, li- the Lord delivered the entire Israelite uh, contingent out of Egypt. Some Bible scholars believe there were about 600,000 men alone. 600,000. Now, if you multiply it to Diba? Kung may babaeng 600,000 doon, pagpalagay mo, ng, pagpalagay mo ng meron uling 600,000 na bata, that's about 1.8 million Israelites that left Egypt. Ganong kadaming tao ang tumira na sa Egypt noong mga panahon na yun. No wonder Pharaoh was very threatened because ang dami nila no? na umalis. Okay? The Israelites were literal slaves under a wicked Egyptian ruler and so, generation after generation, ang kinalakihan nila at kinamulatan nila, alipin kami. Yun lang yung naging reality sa kanila. And when you look at the imagery of being slaves in Egypt, in reality, there is a uh, universal condition of man that we can see from here. That we are all slaves to sin as well. Okay? Romans chapter 5. Verses 12 and 14, and this was what the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, sino ba itong one man? Adam. And death through sin, so death spread to all people, no one being able to stop it or escape its power. No matter how hard we try to be good, we can't. Okay? Even if you try your very best, you will stumble again and again. Kasi ito yung sinful nature na napasa sa atin. Because they all sinned. Okay? Verse 14, Yet death ruled over mankind from Adam to Moses, the lawgiver, even over those who had not sinned as Adam did. Dahil sa kasalanan ni Adam, lahat tayo nagkasala. Tingnan mo katabi mo. Mukha bang, mukha bang hindi nagkasala yan? <laughs> Lahat tayo nagkasala. We are all incapable of doing what is right. So that death became its result. Hindi lang ito kamatayan physically, okay? But this also means eternal separation from the life of God forever. 
Okay? Ito yung bleak picture natin. Ano? Basically, itong dalawang ber- verses na binasa natin painted a very gloomy, hopeless picture for all of us. Dahil sa malaking problema natin, ano, problema natin, we live, we choose to live a life of rebellion which we can see from the attitude of Pharaoh. Okay? He would be stubborn in refusing to follow what God would say. That's why evil is very prevalent in our world today. Now, we all wanted evil to be dealt with, right? Gusto natin may justice na, may justice kapag may nangyaring masama against us. Ang problema, if God would apply His justice to us, all of us will have to die. Lahat tayo mananagot. Kasi lahat tayo nagkasala. But, this is where we see the power of God's love for mankind in operation. Paano ba? Romans 5 verse 8 to 10. It says here in the Amplified Translation, God clearly shows and proves His own love for us by the fact that we were still sinners. Okay? Makasalanan pa tayo, matitigas pa ulo natin, rebellious pa tayo, Christ died for us. How many of you are thankful? Wow, Lord. Nung time na nasa sukdulan na ako ng kasalanan, namatay ang Panginoon para sa akin. In fact, hindi pa tayo nabubuhay. Namatay na ang Panginoon para sa atin. Therefore, since we have now been justified or declared free of the guilt of sin by His blood, how much more certain is it that we will be saved from the wrath of God through Him? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, it is much more certain, having been reconciled, we will be saved from the consequences of sin by His life. That is, we will be saved because Christ lives today. Now, when you go back to the Old Testament, we needed, to be honest, just like that perfect lamb, spotless, unblemished, nung pinatay yung lamb na yun, we need the same sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross. The Bible says he was sinless. At the time of his death on the cross, he spilled his very blood on that cross so that each of us can be given a new life. That's why the Passover reminds us okay, that we are slaves to sin and in need of God to save us from it. We need someone to rescue us. Kailangan natin ng may magliligtas sa atin dahil sa kasalanan natin. That's the very first biblical reality. The second biblical reality, the Passover reminds us that the shedding of blood is needed for man to be cleansed from their sins. The blood that shed on the cross is needed. Verse 13 of Exodus 12, The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. You see, the, la- the, the blood of the lamb or a young goat, okay, when painted on the doorposts, they would spare the Israelite family. They would be spared. By the angel of death. Pag nakita yung uh, blood, blood na yun, ano? The angel of death, again, would pass over it. In fact, the early church leaders, like the apostle Peter, saw the fulfillment through Jesus Christ. Sabi niya sa 1 Peter 1.19. But with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot, he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you. Jesus came to fulfill okay, what happened in the Old Testament. The Passover in Exodus chapter 12 was a foreshadowing of what Jesus would do so that all of us would be given a chance to have a new life. Because after Exodus, pag tinignan natin, Leviticus, Numbers, Nandun na yung nilay down ni God through Moses, yung animal sacrificial system. But that's the old covenant 
where the blood of animals won't be sufficient enough to take away our guilt and our sin. It's through the one final sacrifice of Jesus that would be sufficient enough para mapatawad tayo sa lahat ng kasalanan natin. Now, Hebrews 9.22 says, In fact, under the law, almost everything is cleansed with blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness, neither release from sin and its guilt, nor cancellation of the merited punishment. Now, when we look back more than 2,000 years ago, Christ perfected the sacrificial system. Because in the Old Testament, kailangan mong pumatay ng hayop paulit-ulit. Now, imagine mo, kung si Pastor James nagmura, isang hayop ang papatay niya, mag-offer siya ng sacrifice. Eh, mamaya, magmumura na naman siya. Mamaya, magnanakaw siya. Mamaya, may gagawin siya. Paano ko sampung beses kang magkasala? Ninaubos na yung hayop mo sa, ano, sa ship pen mo, no? Namulubi ka ng di oras, di ba? Why? Kasi may sinful nature tayo. But through the sacrificial work of Christ, once and for all, our sins, past, present, and future, have been dealt with on that cross. What were the last words of Jesus before He gave up His Spirit? He said, It is finished. Hindi na natin kailangan dagdagan. Hindi mo na kailangang penitensya. Hindi mo na kailangang gumawa ng magagandang bagay para tanggapin ka pa ng Panginoon. Para sabihin mo, para naman kalugod-lugod ako. Ginawa na ni Jesus lahat para tanggapin niya tayo. Okay? Tanggapin niya tayo not with our own good works, but with His completed work on the cross. Jesus' death on the cross did something for us. Itong sabi ni Isaiah, 53 verse 5. This was like less than 1,000 years before Jesus was born. This is what he said. He was pierced for our transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquities, referring to Jesus Christ later on. On the cross, he dealt with our failures and our shame. How many of you have failed? Okay. Lahat tayo, di ba, nagkamali, sumablay tayo. Marami tayong mga bagay na ikinahihiya natin kung pag-uusapan natin na nagawa. No? He took our place and endured the death that we deserve so that we can be freed from all our sins. Even those that seem too great to forgive or too harmful to overcome. Okay? Marami man tayong nagawang kasalanan, but the Bible says, look, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, He Himself bore our sins. Think about the worst sin you could probably have done. He bore it. He took it. He said, James, akin yan. Patrick, akin na lahat ng mga kasalanan mo. Lalagay ko lahat sa cross yan. Pinasan niya lahat ng kasalanan natin. Okay? He bore our sins in His body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By His wounds, we have been healed. Jesus carried all our sins. Okay? Lahat ng naisip mong nagawa mong kasalanan, kinuha niya yan. Naipako na lahat sa krus. And then He said, before He died, it is finished. Now, when we start following Jesus, here is the new reality. Okay? We are permanently changed by our identification with Jesus on the cross. Hindi ka na yung dating, kumbaga kung ano man yung old life mo, hindi na yun yung dati. Kaya nga may tinatawag na born again. Okay? Hindi to born again lang na religious exercise. But you have been born again through the Spirit. May nabago na sa'yo, kaya ka na Kristiyano. Okay? The Passover reminds us that the shedding of blood is needed for man to be cleansed from their sins. And finally, the third biblical reality. The Passover points us to God's plan of salvation that requires our faith and obedience. Okay? The Passover points us to God's plan of salvation that requires our faith and obedience. Look at verses 27 and 28, chapter 12. 
It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, for he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians, but spared our houses. And the people bowed their heads and worshipped. Then the people of Israel went and did so as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, and so they did. You see, the Israelites could have questioned Moses and said, Bakit kami kailangan pumatay ng tupa? Bakit kailangan namin, you know, ilagay pa yung dugo sa pintuan? Sobra namang kadiri yan. Diba? Pwede pa nilang questionin siguro si Moses, but what did they do? How did they respond? They responded in worship and said, Lord, ikaw ang masusunod. Susundin namin kayo kasi kita mo lahat from here to the end. Nakita mo na lahat. We're gonna trust you. We're gonna believe in you. That's why now that Jesus has provided the solution for mankind's sin, ang tanong ngayon, how will we respond? Will we stay in our old life, in our old way? Or will we learn to put our faith in Him and obey Him? Yun lang naman ang laging tanong. Okay? Siya ba ang susundin natin? Not 99%, but 100%. Siya ba ang susundin natin 100%? Or may itatago ka kay Lord? May i-withhold ka? Sabi mo, Lord, pwede bang tumawad? 80% lang. Akin na lang yung 20%. Because Lordship is a hundred percent proposition. Either Jesus is Lord of all or He is not Lord at all. That is always a question we need to ask ourselves. When we wake up, before we go to sleep, you ask yourself, have I given everything to the Lord? Have I surrendered everything to the Lord? When you look at your gadget, would it reveal the Lordship of Christ the way you use your gadget. When you look at your calendar, wala na siguro gumagamit ng planner, no? But when you look at your iCal, okay? iCal na ngayon, di ba? Ano ba ang itsura ng kalendaryo mo? I mean, ng schedule mo. Si Lord, si Jesus pa rin ba ang Lord ng schedule natin? When you look at every aspect of our life, is He still Lord over every aspect of our life? The Passover, points us to three biblical realities as I close. And we're going to take the communion in a short while. The Passover reminds us that all of us are slaves to sin and in need of God to save us from it. The Passover reminds us that the shedding of blood is needed for man to be cleansed from their sins. And finally, number three, the Passover points us to God's plan of salvation that requires our faith and obedience. Let me invite everyone to stand. You know, before we make a declaration in this time of worship, let's all bow our heads and close our eyes and examine ourselves. I believe the Holy Spirit is here and He's ready to minister to each one of us. You can close your eyes. You can bow your heads with me. This is a holy moment between you and God. And I want you to ask God, Lord, thank you for the Passover. It happened 4,000 years ago, maybe 4,500 years ago. And 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to fulfill it, came to satisfy the righteous requirement of God so that we don't have to enter the sacrificial system. We don't have to earn our way for us to be made righteous. We simply need Christ to be our Savior and Lord. Where you are today, Ask the Lord, is there any area of your life that is not completely surrendered to Him? Do you feel like at times you're like Pharaoh, you could relate to his stubbornness, 
God is telling you to give this up. God is addressing certain issues in your heart that you need to surrender and say, God, sa'yo na puto. Nagkasala ako, matigas ang ulo ko, sumusubay ako sa sinasabi mo, but I'm putting it at the foot of the cross, surrendering them to you. You know, we can be religious, but God sees our hearts. And when we would willingly say, God, sa'yo na po lahat, then now is the time. And allow the blood of Jesus to cover us, to change us. Father, thank you. Because the Passover in the Old Testament is a symbol of what you will do on the cross. And more than 2,000 years ago, you came to fulfill your work so that mankind can be set free. Lord, we come to you today with a broken spirit, with a contrite heart. We're praying, Father, that God, with your finished work on the cross, we would humbly accept what you have done. Thank you for never leaving us. And thank you for never forsaking us. You know, before we worship, as all heads are bowed and eyes closed, if you are here for the first time or if you've been attending church, but you know at the core of your heart that Jesus is not yet 100% Savior and Lord, but today your prayer is, God, I'm surrendering my life to you. Kung kayo po yun, with no one looking around, can I ask you to raise your hands? I want to lead you into a prayer. I really believe that there are some of you who need to make that decision tonight. Yes, keep your hands raised high so that we can see it. Yes, thank you, thank you. Just keep it raised. You know what? As you raise your hands, I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to lead you into prayer. Nothing magical about this prayer, but as you pray this prayer with us, I'm going to ask some of our Victory Group leaders to stand beside you, to pray with you. And you would allow Christ to come into your heart so that He would be your Savior and Lord. Keep your hands raised and follow me in this short prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me. Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. I am wretched apart from you. But starting tonight, I make a personal decision to make Jesus my Savior and my Lord. Come into my life and start your transforming work in me. Make me the kind of person that you want me to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. si Lord. Praise God. You know, if you raise your hands, you know, just like Community Pastor James, at one point in our life, we made that decision. And that is the starting point. And the reason why I asked some of our Victory Group leaders to stand beside you is because that person can help you, okay, in your exciting spiritual journey. No? So, sana bago kayo umalis, make sure you talk to someone so that he or she can explain further no? and help you in this exciting journey. Alright? We're gonna worship God today and I'm gonna ask Pastor James to lead us in our communion later.
Can we grab the elements there in your seats? As we grab those elements, if it's your first time joining us, you know, this is open to you. And, you know, we're going to do this not just in a religious manner the way that we used to do it. but We do this to remember. As it says in 1 Corinthians 11, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when He was betrayed took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, also He took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Father, today we are remembering the greatest sacrifice that was made on, the, on that cross. Lord, it is not our goodness that we can bring before you, but it is only because of what Jesus has done for us. And so Lord, today, as we partake of this communion, as we eat of this bread, Lord, we remember that you are broken so that today, we can be restored. We can be healed. Lord, for many of us, we think we are beyond saving. Lord, sobrang lala na ng nagawa namin, sobrang mga mali na yung decision namin, hopeless na kami, but Lord, your cross declares otherwise. It says that, Lord, we can be healed, we can be transformed. And so, Lord, today, as we eat of this bread, we remember the hope that comes from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's eat of the bread. And in the same way, God, today, thank you because you shed your blood for us so that we can be forgiven. We can be set free and we can live a righteous life before you. Lord, for many of us, we feel like we cannot change. We cannot turn back from our past because we feel like God ang layo ne. For the last few years of my life, for the last X years of my life, eto na yung pamumuhay ko. Parang di na ako mapapatawad ng Diyos at ng kung sino man. But deep inside us, Lord, we're, we're looking for a way to be forgiven. We're doing this left and right. But Lord, through that shedding of the blood, we can finally receive the forgiveness that we are longing for. A forgiveness that allows us to have a brand new start and a brand new direction. And so, Lord, today we remember all of the condemnation can be silenced because, Lord, you have set us free, you have made us new. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's drink of the cup. Why don't we all raise our hands before we? Leave. Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. Lord, it is finished. And so, Lord, I pray that today, Lord, just like the Israelites, Lord, we would respond in faith and obedience. I pray that as we go back to our houses, as we go back to our community, Lord, to our businesses, to our offices, Lord, we would bring this faith with us. We would obey you no matter what you're calling us to do. Lord, we ask that as we go and as we, as you commission us, you would send us by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to live a life that is righteous and honoring to you. This we pray in Jesus' name and everyone say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Fulfill what God has called you to fulfill.